Many food industries use trans fatty acids to make some foodstuffs because they are relatively cheap, but this comes at a cost for the customers in the long run, especially for the majority of vulnerable persons who cannot afford the alternatives for healthy living. Trans fatty acids are manufactured fats created during a process called hydrogeneration, which is aimed at stabilizing polyunsaturated oils to prevent them from becoming rancid and to keep them solid at room temperature. They may be particularly dangerous for heart health and may pose a risk for certain cancers. According to experts, the elimination of trans fatty acids could save 17.5 million lives over the next 25 years and reduce the cost of health care. But what do people need to know about trans fatty acids? Trans fatty acids are a type of dietary fat, so something you find in our diets. And they are usually they are very they, they are the unhealthy fats if you may say, and uh, we get them uh, in processed foods, so like commercial processed foods, manufactured foods. That's where we find the big quantities of trans fat acids. So things like uh, the baked products, if you look into the cakes, the cookies, the pies. Uh, among so in that category, but also margarine is very rich in trans fat acids. So many Ugandans who eat donuts, who eat uh, fried, you know, foods, uh, who eat uh, some bread, who eat some cakes, who eat some um, uh, all these confectionaries, find themselves eating huge quantities of industrially produced trans fat and this is causing cardiovascular issues including diseases including early death According to a 2018 report by the World Health Organization, WHO, countries that are slow in the regulation of such foods may see a burden arising from the consumption of trans fatty acids increase over time. In Uganda, non-communicable diseases, NCDs, present an increasingly significant burden on ill health and death, accounting to 33% of all deaths countrywide. The number of Ugandans living with NCDs has drastically increased and the probability of someone aged between 30 and 70 years dying of NCDs is 21%. We engaged some of the experts on the cases of illnesses related to the consumption of foods transfers in Uganda. The Cancer Institute in Uganda is telling us that 33% of the death that is happening in Uganda is because of non-communicable diseases. And these deaths are not happening because people have reached the time to die. According to World Health Organization, they are dying prematurely, dying before the age of 70, sometimes before the age of 60. Uganda has an obligation under the UN, not only under the UN, also under the Constitution, under the, the treaty establishing the East African community, under the, the, the laws of Uganda. Uganda has a legal obligation and a constitutional obligation to protect Ugandans from anything like trans fats because they are going to kill them. The Ugandan government has given assurance to achieve a number of global commitments, including achieving the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, and in this case, goal number two, which focuses on ending hunger, achieving food security, and improving nutrition. At the regional level, the African Union AU Agenda 2062 prioritizes health and well-nourished citizens with a strategy of reducing maternal and child malnutrition. Similarly, the Malabo Declaration on Nutrition includes a commitment to increase investment in nutrition to end all forms of malnutrition. Despite the Wu Clarion call for all member countries to implement the regulations on the manufacture, sale and consumption of trans fatty acids by 2023 to prevent the problem from becoming worse, Uganda seems to have done little or no step in that direction. However, Rehema Meme, a standards officer and technical secretary at the Uganda National Bureau of Statistics, said that there is ongoing research on foods rich in transfer. It's an ongoing initiative at the international level. That's uh, at Codex level, uh, where um, the proposal of uh, uh, elimination or reduction of uh, 
uh, trans fatty acids in food to ensure consumer health and safety was uh, uh, started by WHO. There is ongoing work by international uh, guidelines or regulations will be developed and then uh, with support in all these other three committees. What we have to note that uh, Uganda is actively also participating and following up that work with coordination uh, of UNBS as the Secretariat for uh, Developing Standards. And then uh, when all that work is being done, we shall be in position to adopt those international regulations. The East African Community EAC Food and Nutrition Security Strategy FNSS 2018 to 2022 sets a clear objective of improving access and utilization of nutritious, diverse and safe food by 2022. This has been recognized in the Uganda Nutrition Action Plan 2 whose vision is to create a well-nurtured, healthy and productive population that effectively participates in the socio-economic transformation of the country. However, the plan does not have have a clear strategy for developing regulations that will help eliminate the supply of foods that contain trans fatty acids. This is a violation of human rights as protected under the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, including the right to food, as many of these unhealthy foods, rich in trans fat, have no labels, and for those that have, the language is not clear for the layman to understand the contents in these foods. And that's uh, for. Uh the fats and oil for which the trans fatty acids could emerge uh, do not have specific uh, limits that they are in and also the labeling aspects of uh, uh, trying to, 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 to curb the fatty acid is also not clear but there is ongoing work that is happening that all these standards will be revised and some of these standards we already adopted them as a country they are running standards in Uganda so which means if work is um, uh, finalized at that level, we shall also have to adopt uh, accordingly and change all the standards to speak the same language. According to Uganda Revenue Authority, the government body charged with tax collection, trillions of shillings are collected from trans fatty acids. Could it be that there is no will to put in place regulations because they could affect the tax base? Uh, according to the statistics that we have as the Uganda Revenue Authority, we have about 9,273 uh, companies and individuals that deal in that type of product. We are talking of about 4.672 trillion for the past four years that we have collected as tax from dealers in this kind of products. Of course, I'm not attributing all the 4 trillion to trans fatty acids products because, like I indicated earlier, they also deal in other products. Now, in 2019-2020, we had about 922 billion. In 2020-2021, we had about 991.4 billion. In 2021-2022, we had a tax collection of 1.265 billion trillion. Sorry, and then in 2022, that is last year, we had 1.493 billion. Meaning that the total that we have collected so far for the past four years is about 4.6 trillion from dealers, importers and manufacturers of these uh, products. But then what should be done to reduce the consumption and illnesses related to trans fatty acids in Uganda? As a country, I think uh, what we need to do for what we are doing is that uh, we need to increase awareness. Okay. We need to create increase awareness so that the, the population, the masses can know, we empower them with information on how they can ensure that they are doing health deaths and uh, minimizing consumption of these, the, the transfer tasks, the transfer foods, the bad fats in our diets. See, normally tax is used to regulate consumption of certain items. It is, of course, used to collect the revenue, but also regulate. So for us as the URA, we wait upon a, a government to tell us this, this particular tax you collect, this particular uh, product you do not collect from. And uh, if the Ministry of uh, Health is talking about banning of these products, for us, if it comes out, 
definitely we shall just abide by it. has a legal obligation and a constitutional obligation to protect Ugandans from anything like trans fats because they are going to kill them. Secondly, the law requires them to not only protect or eliminate but also respect our right, prevail over these companies that are selling these dangerous chemicals to Ugandans. We have been working with several multi-stakeholders over the issue and we think that government will come up with a law to ban trans fats in our food system. But then what should be done to reduce the consumption and illnesses related to trans fatty acids in Uganda?